Hello there! It's day 276 of our chronological Bible reading. So today we have read the book of Matthew. Yes, we are actually now in the New Testament. Yes, so today we have read this. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and chapter 6. Yesterday we started um, the New Testament, so we read Matthew chapter 1 to 4. For those of you who would like to join our chronological Bible reading, just visit my YouTube channel. And at a video like this one, just look at the description box at the bottom and you'll see something like this and as you can see here there's show more just click on that one and just scroll a little bit and you'll see my social media accounts so here my Twitter, toothinsight underscore, my Instagram, truth.insight, and my Facebook at truthinsight2020. On this social media accounts, you'll see what book and what chapters to read for the day i post it every day yes every day so now let us share what we've learned Okay, but before we go to um, today's reading, let's just uh, make a recap of our reading yesterday because I wasn't able to post it. So here, Matthew 4. So yesterday's reading was Matthew chapter 4 up to chapter 4, up chapter 1 rather, up to chapter 4. So let's just scroll quickly to um, verse 5 here. Let's just re read quickly. Then the devil took him, that's Jesus, right? Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order His angels to protect you. And they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. Right? And then, you know, um, you see, it's the scripture here, right? So, if you look at it, the devil said here, the devil, right? If you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, right? So the devil knows the scripture, right? And indeed, this is in the scripture. But, you know, Jesus replied here, the scriptures also say, right? This is Jesus now. So it's a scripture against scripture. So this demonstrates the importance of reading the Bible in its entirety. You have to read cover to cover, not just bits and pieces. So you'll get the whole truth, right? So now let's go to 
today's reading. It's Matthew chapter 5. So let's scroll to verse 16. Verse 16 right here. Right? Let's start here. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights up a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So take note of this, right? Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Okay? Hold that thought for now. Let's go to the next verse. Um, verse 44 verse 44 right here right and then let's see if I can uh, so this is teaching about love for enemies right? the title. let's see if I can fit everything here there you go so verse 43 you have heard the laws that the law the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. In that way you will be acting as true children of your father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. Right? But you are to be perfect even as your Father in Heaven is perfect. So, let's just um, highlight a few verses here. Verse 44, see? But I say, so this is Jesus talking, love your enemies. Right? And then, verse 47, if you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. Indeed, right? Now, before I, I uh, proceed, let me just tell you that this is red text, right? Red text. It's the first time for us to see the red text so only in the New Testament, New Testament chapters, books, because the red text means Jesus. It's Jesus' words, Jesus himself talking here right that's the good thing about the bibles now so if you want to see all that uh, jesus had said in the new testament just scroll and keep reading all the red text it's easier easier to spot so now here jesus says love your enemies is it easy to love your enemy well it's not and but one way of loving your enemy is you know, like this one, pray for those who persecute you. So instead of cursing them, which will not help you in any way, you might as well pray, right? So pray that uh, they will change or they will stop um, doing wrong things to you, right? Ask for God's help in that respect, right? And then uh, also ask God, if possible, to touch their hearts so they, they would uh, stop their wickedness, so they will repent from their sins if they're sinning. In that way, you are loving them, 
right? Because you, you don't want them to end up in hell. So you're giving them an opportunity to change so that they will go to heaven. So that's one way of loving your enemies, by right? Praying for them, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next chapter. Um, yep, chapter 6. Chapter 6. So verse 1, teaching about giving to the needy. Okay. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly. Don't be admired by to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. Hmm. See? When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. So, look at this one. Watch out, right? Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, right? Admired by others, like uh, other people would see that and then they will end up telling you that you're you're rich or you're so generous, wow, like that, right? So it's like, um, you know, but it, 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 here it says, don't do it publicly with this objective to be admired by others, right? If we will go back to um, chapter 5, and what was that? Verse 16. Here. Verse 16, remember? Let your good deeds shine out for all to see. Right? So that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. At a quick glance, it may seem that these two verses are in conflict with each other, but actually it's not. This one, uh, you let your good deeds to be seen by others with this objective, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Right? That's the objective for the glory of God. right? So that they will uh, repent of their sins and turn to God. That is the objective of doing that. But on this verse, right, don't do your good deeds publicly with this objective, right, to be admired by others. So it's a show off, right? So you see the difference? Okay. Okay. What's next? Let's go to chapter to, to verse uh, six. Verse six. So teaching about prayer and fasting. So here, verse five. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. So again, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly, right? So that people will see them, right? Where everyone can see them because their objective is to show off. That's the thing, right? You don't have to show off. 
but you know we have to always remember that our father in heaven can see everything so he's everywhere so even if you pray in your own private room alone he sees that so no need to go out or to, no need to go to that church or no need to um yeah no need to go to a, a church of worship to pray right you can pray in your own room you see this reminds me of uh, some churches um, that encourages going to church to celebrate the feasts of sad to say idols right and imagine it's uh, an, an, a replica of a burnt idol so they're celebrating feast of a replica of a burnt idol which is so sad anyway so you don't have to go there and see that idol to pray you, you can pray anywhere you can pray in your room because God is everywhere God sees everything now let's move on to the next verse verse 14 if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now this is where Jesus taught us how to pray the uh, Lord's Prayer, right? You see this? Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy, may your kingdom come soon, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't, la don't let us yield to temptation but rescue us from the evil one. So you see this? We memorize this, right? And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us right we memorize it but we don't really understood well what it really means is this if you forgive those who sin against you your heavenly father will forgive you but if you refuse to forgive others your father will not forgive your sins so this is important okay i think it's very clear let's move on to the next verse verse 20 teaching about money and possessions store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy the thieves do not break in and steal so that's verse 20 but what is this all about verse 19 don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal so this is about everything that we collect here on earth right like money number one number two is uh like gold like things like that Still, uh, um, jewelries and things like cars, houses, uh, all, everything in earth, on earth, right? So, it is always best for us to do this store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal meaning it is eternal so what what are these treasures you see whenever we uh, serve our father god in heaven right whenever we serve god or whenever we serve jesus we will be rewarded when we get to heaven so this is what it is when we obey God and we serve him then we will be rewarded in heaven so that way we are storing treasures in heaven 
right? And of course, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So if our treasures is in heaven, then our desires, our desires, of course, to be in heaven, right? But if our treasure is is like here on earth, like the money, then it's like that's what we want. That's the desire of our heart to have more money. It's not really heaven, right? Now, if we go to of first down here. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So there you go. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Okay? Clear. I hope it's clear. Yeah. Now going to the last verse here for today, verse 33. Here. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So we've read this last time I think so seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need so how do you seek the kingdom of God so by praying by knowing what God wants us to do how do we do that we read the Bible right you know, some people can memorize the Bible, but I can't. So I have to read the Bible again and again, over to over, to know what God wants me to do. And then do my best to obey God. So live righteously. Then He will give me everything I need. So that's what it means. So if I will do this, then I don't have to worry about anything. Right? Okay, I don't have to worry about tomorrow because God will take good care of me if I pray to God and to read the Bible so that I would know what God wants me to do and I will do my best to obey it. That's all for today. See you again next time.